see how to actually install a Windows 11 VM on a ESX host, which has got no TPM enabled on it at all. Now, let's go to the create VM wizard here. Click on next, continue. And I'm going to give the VM a name, which in this case is Udemy 1. Select the compatibility mode as ESX 8 and about. Under the guest OS, I'm going to pick on Windows and I'm going to select Windows 11. Okay. Click on next to continue. I'll, I'll leave this unchecked for the time being. And I'll just pick up any data store I've got here. Click on next to continue. Customize settings. What I'm going to throw is some CPU, RAM, disk, etc. in here. Now, I happen to be having an NVMe controller. So I'm just going to add another device here. I'm going to add an NVMe controller. I'm going to spec my CPU to 24 core. And this is just optional, really, because I happen to be running this particular VM on my ESX, which has got a lot of compute on it. So I'm good with 24 core. But in your case, you'll just be having around four CPUs or maybe about <clears throat> 32 gig of RAM, etc. So that's really fine. Okay, it doesn't matter. So and here, memory, I'm just going to put it as 120 gig of memory. Now, on the next option, I'm going to choose the hard disk. I'm going to change this to thin provision, and I'm going to change it to 5 GB. And under the SCSI controller option, you generally want it to be para virtual because that's the one that offers the best performance as opposed to an LSI parallel and SI logic SAS. Now I'm going to change this hard disk to use the NVMe controller. And the way I do this, I come to find a GB hard disk here. Now I'm going to under this SCSI controller, I'm going to change this to NVMe. Okay. So that will simply mean that the disk is actually booting off the NVMe bay. Okay. So now on the network adapter, by default, when you actually do this installation, uh, from the ESX, it will actually pick up the E1000E adapter. Okay, so you want to actually make sure we pick up the VNMaxNet 3 because that's the adapter that gives you 10 gig throughput on the network. Right, put this on the internet port group and then I'll click on next and click on finish. We now need a operating system on this VM, right? We've got the shell right now, so let's see how to actually install an operating system. Now, as part of this lecture module, what I've done is actually I've downloaded the Windows 11. And I've put it on this data store. So the way you go about that is you go and select the data store here. You select the data store browser and you select go to the ISO. And this is the file we we are going to use. I think it's here. It's here. This is the file we can actually use right now. Okay. Now you just click on upload and then it'll take you to the ISO and you just upload the file. Okay. Now go to our Udemy VM edit the VM and go back to the settings and let's select the CD drive ISO here and I've got I think I've got one more image here under the ISO folder or maybe here that's one okay we'll select that one and we'll ensure it's connected at powered on option is ticked and we'll also go to the connect option as ticked as well now, this will be very quick to boot, right? So let's see if we can actually change the boot option as well. So boot delay, when the VM boots, delay by about, let's say for about 15 seconds or 20 seconds or something like that, 20 milliseconds, right? So let's say 2000. So it gives us enough time to actually press the button to boot the VM, okay? Save on it. And now we'll just power on the VM and open the console as it boots up, okay? As it boots up, you press the button any key to boot the CD. So now the CD is actually loaded and it will now go to the installation of Windows 11. Okay, let's now select next to continue. Now we'll choose the option of install now. And I don't have a product key for this VM right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to select the option. I do not have a product key. Now, it's going to display me all the operating system that can be installed with the ISO. So I'm just going to pick up Windows 11 Pro in this case and click on next to continue, right? Now, here is the cache, guys. So when you do press this button, 
what you expect is the installation to stop. Now, because this is a Windows 11 VM, and we know there is an issue with the TPM module, and the VM will not work without the TPM, the VM can't run Windows 11. So we've got a problem now. So how do we resolve this issue now? So let me just walk you through an article I saw on the internet. So this is a Windows TPM hack. Now this guy has actually written this article saying what it says is, basically this is a hack for Windows 11. If you're not using a TPM, there's a hack to actually bypass this um, TPM check is what this says. So what he says is to download this ISO file from here and attach the Windows drive along with this um, ISO drive and then go to Shift F10, go into this directory and this is script here, which basically is this one, right? And that will bypass the, the TPM check. So let's see if we can do it. So I have downloaded this file and I've uploaded the um, ISO. So let's open up that uh, um, ESX again. And this time what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go into the ESX again. With that, well, we can leave the power on, that's fine. Go to edit settings. I need to add one more CD drive here. So I'll do one more CD drive and go into the this section and select the ISO file. Now I'll point this in the direction of that file which I uploaded earlier. So under the small data store ISO, this is the TPM file that I downloaded. So I'm going to click on select. I'll ensure that this is connected and is connected at power on. And I'm going to click on save. Okay. Now that's that's done. Now we've now press shift F10. This opens up a shell. Now what we're going to do right now is run the command WMIC call disk get name to show me all the drives on this system. So it's got three drives in there. So if I open up the D drive, for example, in sorry, D drive. Oh, D. Oh, it's not taken in my keyboard, but it looks a bit. A D colon. Okay, so if I now go into execute DIR, this shows me whatever is there on this drive. Now let's go back and browse into the E drive that probably will be the, the script file. So let's go to E drive, E drive, because I'm using a non US keyboard, which is why it doesn't allow me. Okay, anyway, there you go. Let's go to DIR here. So this is the script he wants us to run. So let me run that script, TP, M, P, W, N, P, bat, and click on enter. So basically it says that the operation is successful. So what it did is adds a registry key in here, which bypasses the check. That's exactly what it does. Now, if you do not do this thing, you'll not be allowed to install Windows 11, right? So normally if you don't have this thing, what you do is to actually, you go into the, open the registry editor, which is like regedit command. It opens up the registry and you add in, you go into this path, yeah, the system setup lab config, that path, and and you create this entry and that will let you do the same thing. Now, this script is taken care of it for us. So we'll exit this thing and we will ensure that we'll click on cancel. It says, are you sure to quit? And we'll say yes to it. And now, We'll click on install again. And this time we'll go through the same sequence again. I don't have a product key. And let's click on the next button. So the same menu appears right now. So I'm going to actually pick the Windows 11 uh, Pro here. And I'm just going to click on next and to see if this installation passes through, right? So click on next to continue. Right, this time it goes through. I'm gonna accept the licensing agreements and click on next to continue. And because this is a new installation, I'm actually gonna create a custom. And this is my 500 GB disk which I located. And I'm gonna click on next to continue here. And it's gonna actually now start to copy the files from the ISO onto my disk.
install the features, install the updates, and once it's done, we'll boot up the VM. About five to six minutes to actually do the installation. And once it does the installation, it's going to restart the system. And let's wait for the restart operation to complete. And at this moment, you can actually remove the two ISO images which we connected.